In this video, I'm going to be sharing with you some tips that we have been taking in order to reduce our spending so that we could save that money short term and then put it into investments. Hi everyone, welcome back to channel. If you're new here, my name is Lisa. I used to work as an engineer in corporate and I quit my job recently to go venture into my own thing. I'm not a fan of long-term savings, but I also know that many people are just trying to get by right now and trying to figure out ways to budget. I think there's definitely a spectrum, right? So people who tell you, oh, don't save, just find more ways to make money, are people who already have a lot of money. Then there's people who are just saving and never invest and go off and do a business venture. I'm slap in the middle, my husband and I, and so we definitely believe and there's a balance between saving and also investing. So number one is energy usage. So if you live in Colorado or other states that use Excel Energy as your primary energy utilities producer, you'll probably have received a card that looks something like this in the mail, I wouldn't say recently, about a couple months ago. And it says over here, starting with the bill that includes April 1st, you will have a new way to save on your energy bill. Over here on this lovely sheet over here, you see off peak hours and during high peak hours. We have intentionally been taking time to figure out how we can schedule our laundry doing or doing the dishwasher or any kind of activity that requires a large amount of energy revolving around this guy. This is the first month we have been doing it. So it is April and we started in April. I can't give you exactly comparison of energy bills before and after, but I think when it comes to June or May, when we do get our energy bills in, I'm gonna do a comparison off peak versus just normal energy consumption to see how much exactly we saved. But I'm pretty sure you can save a few bucks on here. Here is how much you use on gas. All right, so I made a video about how much it is to own operate a car in 2023 up here in this video. My husband and I intentionally only have one car because we force ourselves to only use one car everywhere we go and we're more cognizant about gas usage. This is not to say, okay, from now onwards, it's cut all our driving, going to places. This is just so that now you are more aware where you're going. Maybe plan things such as, we used to go grocery shopping a lot because if we run out of something in the middle of the day, we didn't plan very well for the Saturday grocery trip and we would just go grab it. Now, because it's all adding up and gas prices are not gonna go down that much anytime sooner, we've planned our lives to say, all right, if we run out of stuff, we're gonna write it into a grocery list and at the end of the week on a Saturday, we're gonna make a huge grocery run so that we don't have to drive excess during the week. Three is how much you go out to eat. Okay, this sounds like common sense. The USDA actually predicts that inflation of food has already risen 7.6% 7, 7 and probably will keep rising this year. Obviously common sense will then tell us that restaurants is gonna charge even more because they don't only have to account for grocery prices, they have to account for rental property, for paying their employees, for excess food contingency, whatnot, and also for maintenance of a restaurant. Maintaining a restaurant is a lot of upkeep and work and money and then paying in profit to the owners. That means you've probably already seen menus that look like this, blurred out, prices have changed, and maybe you haven't paid attention in the past because inflation wasn't that crazy and going out to eat twice a week seemed like a luxury, but now going out twice a week to eat with maybe a family of one or two is now triple the amount that you did pay in the past. It's time to rethink about going out to eat. Maybe you should start really, really cooking your own meals and doing something really simple that you haven't done before. Four is something that I thought was common sense for us, but I didn't realize how many people didn't do it, and so I'm gonna share it. And that is pay your savings account before you pay yourself. So when I worked in the past and my husband worked, he still currently works as an engineering firm, we both had this rule where we budgeted out and looked at all our expenditures, major expenditures, like our mortgage that we had to pay, food and groceries, um, utilities, maybe car expenses if we had any, and all of that those payments were paid down first as soon as we got a deposit from our employers. After those were taken care of, we would put 50% of whatever is left into our savings account. And that meant that literally one person's paycheck was going to savings every single month. After that, we would have like maybe 15% left over and we would take 10% of our income combined and tithe it. We really believe in tithing. We really believe in giving back to church, God and community. If you don't believe in God, give it back to community. I think it's really important because whatever you give back to, what in my case, God, and maybe your case, community, is gonna come back to you. And then afterwards, we're only left with 5%, and that would be fun money. So fun money is going to be anything that we wanted to get, maybe for ourselves, any saving up for a little vacation trip, 
or just going and going for a date night somehow, that would be fun money. And that method really helped us keep us in check. Just having a tiny percent left over every month after you've paid your savings account. Quit your expensive coffee habit. Going and getting coffee every single day, the average Starbucks menu is $5 for coffee, right? That's a probably lower end guess because you're not taking into account taxes and getting croissant on the side. So let's say you get coffee from Starbucks or some great coffee place for $5 every single day. And do that during the weekday because you're running late to work. Five times five is $25. $25 times four per month, which means $100 on coffee per month. That's just drinking coffee at Starbucks. That doesn't include other stuff, okay? $100 per month times 12 is 1,200. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot for some people that's making a lot of money, but for you right now, if you're sitting there struggling and wondering how in the world you're trying to budget and save money, $1,200 is actually pretty substantial and significant. That is almost a fifth of the federal limit 2022 and 2023 for Roth IRA contributions. <laughs> you could put that money into your Roth IRA as opposed to going to Starbucks every day or just cutting it down once in a while. Go have a look next time you go to Starbucks or another outlet. You look at their menu, look at what you remember it to be, and then realize that the cup of coffee you used to pay only like $3 for is probably now five, six, or even seven. Six is apparel, controlling how much you spend on clothing and accessories. If you have noticed, like I have, because of inflation, clothing companies right now are trying to market their clothing on sale for many of you to still get into the habit of spending so that they can still have a profit right now. And everywhere you go, every single store you go to right now, you'll have these massive markups saying sale. I mean, a sale is not exactly a sale. It just means that you are not paying as much as you could have, but now you're still paying something to get the clothing. I'm just telling you right now, sales may sound like a nice idea, but clothing companies are still making a huge profit, even if some clothing is marked as sale. So no, it's not a bang for your buck, and no, you're not getting a good deal just because you're like literally buying half the price. You're still buying something, and you're probably still spending $40 as opposed to the $80 that was marked up there. You're still spending money. Do you know the average household in America spends about $150 per month on apparel that includes clothing and accessories? That doesn't sound like a lot, right? But let's say an average household makes only about $3,000 per month. $150 per month is about 5% of that. Thrift store shopping is still shopping. It doesn't mean if you go into a thrift store, you can now find the guilty pleasure. Ah, oh, I just spent $50 on 100 items as opposed to like $50 on one item. You're still spending $50, whether you like it or not. Seven is start a high yield savings account. I actually made a video talking about how much we made in interest over here in a high yield savings account. My understanding is that if you're gonna leave any money in the bank, you might as well leave it somewhere where the bank is gonna actually pay you some money while you leave their, your money in there. Just so you know, banks work in that when you deposit and leave money in the bank and you don't touch it for a while, the bank uses your money to do loans, to do refinancing, to do other stuff. So if they're gonna use your money, why can't they pay you a certain amount of interest? Eight is actually something that I thought I was really doing and then I realized I was not very good at it. Sit down and make a list of all the subscriptions that you have premium membership for and you haven't canceled yet and you no longer use it. I thought I was really good at keeping subscriptions to date and making sure that we're not subscribed to stuff that we don't want. And two weeks ago, my husband came to me and said we were just charged a $50 annual renewal membership for a running thing that we were part of. We don't go to this running company anymore. We bought shoes there. I thought at the time I was getting a discount by setting up a premium membership. I thought I set an alarm on my phone. Turns out I forgot. And now they build us again. So do us a favor, do me a favor, do you a favor, sit down, take an hour of your time of the week and just write down all the subscriptions, go through your credit card statements, go through your bank account statements. You'd be kind of surprised what missing subscriptions you just randomly build out and that could contribute to your overall depleting bank account. Form a three to five year plan. Three to five years from now, where do you wanna see yourself? What are you gonna to do to reach a financial goal? It may be a small financial goal, like, oh, half 50,000 in my bank account by the end of three years. That may be a good goal to start. Or it may be a big goal, such as, okay, I want to be at a point where even if inflation and interest rates are really, really, really high, I wanna have three investment properties or a business startup or whatnot. 
have that goal and try work for it. There's always the stigma that we live on paycheck to paycheck in America and we don't know how to save and invest. But I think it's time where we start having the mindset that we're not only going to live during the high times and then struggle during the low times. We'll live during the high times just fine frugally and during the low times of the economy in the world, like if a pandemic had to hit again, we will still have money. So make sure you develop a financial plan, like have contingency fund and don't only have like 10,000 contingency fund, have a lump sum of contingency fund, put in different buckets of investment so that when something happens major in your life again, you're not struggling like everyone else is. And my husband and I do this all the time. We look at our finances, we visit it every year and think to ourselves, three years from now, what are we hoping to achieve? Five years from now, what are we hoping to achieve? Know if you're young what you want and work towards it. I sincerely hope that right now, whatever you're struggling in, in terms of inflation, you realize that you're not in this alone and we're all doing this together. And if there's anything I can tell you leaving this video, it's to do something, do something. Do something with your life, do something with your finances today. Don't just sit there and listen to me in this video because often we just sit there and listen to other people and never do it. Literally put down the video if you have to and then go do the thing. Take care you guys.